Chapter 3 of The Essentials of Prayer by Edward Bounds. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by El Sagalo. 3. Prayer and Devotion. Once, as I rode out into the woods for my health in 1737, having alighted from my horse in a retired place, as my manner commonly had been to walk for divine contemplation and prayer, I had a view that for me was extraordinary, of the glory of the Son of God. As near as I can judge, this continued about an hour, and kept me the greater part of the time in a flood of tears and weeping aloud. I felt an ardency of soul to be what I know not otherwise how to express, emptied and annihilated, to love him with a holy and pure love, to serve and follow him, to be perfectly sanctified and made pure with a divine and heavenly purity. Jonathan Edwards Devotion has a religious signification. The root of devotion is to devote to a sacred use, so that devotion in its true sense has to do with religious worship. It stands intimately connected with true prayer. Devotion is the particular frame of mind found in one entirely devoted to God. It is the spirit of reverence, of awe, of godly fear. It is a state of heart which appears before God in prayer and worship. It is foreign to everything like lightness of spirit and is opposed to levity and noise and bluster. Devotion dwells in the realm of quietness and is still before God. It is serious thoughtful, meditative. Devotion belongs to the inner life and lives in the closet, but also appears in the public services of the sanctuary. It is a part of the very spirit of true worship and is of the nature of the spirit of prayer. Devotion belongs to the devout man whose thoughts and feelings are devoted to God. Such a man has a mind giving up holy to religion, and possesses a strong affection for God and an ardent love for his house. Cornelius was a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed always. Devout men carried Stephen to his burial. One Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, was sent unto Saul when he was blind to tell him what the Lord would have him do. God can wonderfully use such men, for devout men are his chosen agents in carrying forward his plans. Prayer promotes the spirit of devotion, while devotion is favorable to the best praying. Devotion furthers prayer and helps to drive prayer home to the object which it seeks. Prayer thrives in the atmosphere of true devotion. It is easy to pray when in the spirit of devotion. The attitude of mind and the state of heart implied in devotion make prayer effectual in reaching the throne of grace. God dwells where the spirit of devotion resides. All the graces of the Spirit are nourished and grow well in the environment created by devotion. Indeed, these graces grow nowhere else but here. The absence of a devotional spirit means death to the graces born in a renewed heart. True worship finds congeniality in the atmosphere made by a spirit of devotion. While prayer is helpful to devotion, at the same time devotion reacts on prayer and helps us to pray. Devotion engages the heart in prayer. It is not an easy task for the lips to try to pray while the heart is absent from it. The charge which God at one time made against his ancient Israel was that they honored him with their lips while their hearts were far from him. The very essence of prayer is the spirit of devotion. Without devotion, prayer is an empty form, a vain round of words. Sad to say, much of this kind of prayer prevails today in the church. This is a busy age, bustling and active, and this bustling spirit has invaded the church of God. Its religious performances are many. The church works at religion with the order, precision, and force of real machinery. 
but too often it works with the heartlessness of the machine there is much of the treadmill movement in our ceaseless round and routine of religious doings we pray without praying we sing without singing with the spirit and the understanding we have music without the praise of god being in it or near it we go to church by habit and come home all too gladly when the benediction is pronounced we read our accustomed chapter in the bible and feel quite relieved when the task is done we say our prayers by rote as a schoolboy recites his lesson and are not sorry when the amen is uttered religion has to do with everything but our hearts it engages our hands and feet it takes hold of our voices it lays its hands on our money it affects even the postures of our bodies but it does not take the hold of our affections our desires our zeal and make us serious desperately in earnest and cause us to be quiet and worshipful in the presence of god social affinities attract us to the house of god not the spirit of the occasion church membership keeps us after a fashion decent in outward conduct and with some shadow of loyalty to our baptismal vows but the heart is not in the thing it remains cold formal and unimpressed amid all this outward performance while we give ourselves over to self-congratulation that we are doing wonderfully well religiously why all these sad defects in our piety why this modern perversion of the true nature of the religion of jesus christ why is the modern type of religion so much like a jewel case with the precious jewels gone why so much of this handling religion with the hands often not too clean or unsoiled and so little of it felt in the heart and witnessed in the life the great lack of modern religion is the spirit of devotion we hear sermons in the same spirit with which we listen to a lecture or hear a speech we visit the house of god just as if it were a commonplace on a level with the theatre the lecture room or the forum we look upon the minister of god not as the divinely called man of god but merely as a sort of public speaker on a plane with the politician the lawyer or the average speechmaker or the lecturer oh how the spirit of true and genuine devotion would radically change all this for the better we handle sacred things just as if they were things of the world even the sacrament of the lord's supper becomes a mere religious performance no preparation for it beforehand and no meditation and prayer afterward even the sacrament of baptism has lost much of its solemnity and degenerated into a mere form with nothing specially in it we need the spirit of devotion not only to salt our secularities but to make praying real prayers we need to put the spirit of devotion into monday's business as well as in sunday's worship we need the spirit of devotion to recollect always the presence of god to be always doing the will of god to direct all things always to the glory of god the spirit of devotion puts god in all things it puts god not merely in our praying and church going but in all the concerns of life whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god the spirit of devotion makes the common things of earth sacred and the little things great with this spirit of devotion we go to business on monday directed by the very same influence and inspired by the same influences by which we went to church on sunday the spirit of devotion makes a sabbath out of a saturday and transforms the shop and the office into a temple of god the spirit of devotion removes religion from being a thin veneer and puts it into the very life and being of our souls with it religion ceases to be doing a mere work and becomes a heart sending its rich blood through every artery and beating with the pulsations of vigorous and radiant life the spirit of devotion is not merely the aroma of religion but the stalk and stem on which religion grows it is the salt which penetrates and makes savory all religious acts 
it is the sugar which sweetens duty self-denial and sacrifice it is the bright coloring which relieves the dullness of religious performances it dispels frivolity and drives away all skin deep forms of worship and makes worship a serious and deep-seated service impregnating body soul and spirit with its heavenly infusion let us ask in all seriousness has this highest angel of heaven this heavenly spirit of devotion this brightest and best angel of earth left us when the angel of devotion has gone the angel of prayer has lost its wings and it becomes a deformed and loveless thing the ardor of devotion is in prayer in revelation four eight we read and they rest not day nor night saying holy 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 lord god almighty which was and is and is to come the inspiration and center of their rapturous devotion is the holiness of god that holiness of god claims their attention inflames their devotion there is nothing cold nothing dull nothing wearisome about them or their heavenly worship they rest not day nor night what zeal what unfainting ardor and ceaseless rapture the ministry of prayer if it be anything worthy of the name is a ministry of ardor a ministry of unwearied and intense longing after god and after his holiness the spirit of devotion pervades the saints in heaven and characterizes the worship of heaven's angelic intelligences no devotionless creatures are in that heavenly world god is there and his presence begets the spirit of reverence of awe and of filial fear if we would be partakers with them after death we must first learn the spirit of devotion on earth before we get there these living creatures in their restless tireless attitude after god and their rapt devotion to his holiness are the perfect symbols and illustrations of true prayer and its ardor prayer must be a flame its ardor must consume prayer without fervor is as a sun without light or heat or as a flower without beauty or fragrance a soul devoted to god is a fervent soul and prayer is the creature of that flame he only can truly pray who is all aglow for holiness for god and for heaven activity is not strength work is not zeal moving about is not devotion activity often is the unrecognized symptom of spiritual weakness it may be hurtful to piety when made the substitute for real devotion and worship the cult is much more active than its mother but she is the wheel horse of the team pulling the load without noise or bluster or show the child is more active than the father who may be bearing the rule and burdens of an empire on his heart and shoulders enthusiasm is more active than faith though it cannot remove mountains nor call into action any of the omnipotent forces which faith can command a feeble lively showy religious activity may spring from many causes there is much running around much stirring about much going here and there in present-day church life but sad to say the spirit of genuine heartfelt devotion is strangely lacking if there be real spiritual life a deep-toned activity will spring from it but it is an activity springing from strength and not from weakness it is an activity which has deep roots many and strong in the nature of things religion must show much of its growth above ground much will be seen and be evident to the eye the flower and fruit of a holy life abounding in good works must be seen it cannot be otherwise but the surface growth must be based on a vigorous growth of unseen life and hidden roots deep down in the renewed nature must the roots of religion go which is seen on the outside the external must have a deep internal groundwork there must be much of the invisible and the underground growth or else the life will be feeble and short-lived and the external growth sickly and fruitless 
In the book of the prophet Isaiah these words are written, They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40:31 this is the genesis of the whole matter of activity and strength of the most energetic exhaustless and untiring nature all this is the result of waiting on god there may be much of activity induced by drill created by enthusiasm the product of the weakness of the flesh the inspiration of volatile short-lived forces activity is often at the expense of more solid useful elements and generally to the total neglect of prayer to be too busy with god's work to commune with god to be busy with doing church work without taking time to talk to god about his work is the highway to backsliding and many people have walked therein to the hurt of their immortal souls notwithstanding great activity great enthusiasm and much hurrah for the work the work and the activity will be but blindness without the cultivation and the maturity of the graces of prayer end of chapter three recording by elsa gallo for batalion tampa florida